Hi everyone and welcome to my online presentation on learning through art. I decided to do this topic because art is very near and dear to my heart and I almost even went to art school. I decided against it because um, why sit around like drawing superheroes when you could be one yourself. Throughout nursing school I found ways to incorporate art through my studying and I actually found that I was able to remember the material better when I was drawing it out. So this project is inspired by that fact and let's continue. Let's talk about the objectives for this course. After watching this video, you should be able to paint the Mona Lisa. Just kidding. First, I would like you guys to gain a greater understanding of the generative learning theory and be able to identify examples of this theory in the outside world. Second, you should be able to define, define the practice of learner-generated drawing and hopefully be able to practice it yourselves. Third, everyone will be able to implement instructor-generated drawing because I doubt you'll be able to go through your whole training careers without trying to draw something out for a student. Last but not least, have fun! Even though I can't supply candy for this class, I bet you guys can imagine it. What is generative learning theory? Well, it's a theory founded back in 1974 by Merlin Whitrock, an American educational psychologist. He claimed by introducing into the paradigms for studying, learning, the perception and interpretation of the learner, processing the information, and actively constructing meaning from it. His new theory of generative learning caused a paradigm shift, shift from cognitive to, to constructive approaches in teaching. To translate that for you, generative learning builds on old ideas of studying in order for the learner, for the learner to process and actively construct meaning from new material. Simply, it's using what you already know to help you understand new information. Constructive learning is made up of four parts, and instructors can use one or all of them to get their point across. The first component is generation, where a learner makes connections between new material presented and the learner's own prior knowledge of that material. It's like being on Great British Bake Off and trying a new type of cookie when you only know and you've ever made chocolate chip cookies. Contestants, you only have 10 minutes. Second, motivation. It is a learner's willingness to put effort into learning the material. Like what's their desire behind learning? For our Bake Off contest contestants, that would be the prize money. Third, attention. Would be the directing ger generative process towards the relevant incoming material in stored knowledge. Back to British Bake Off, this would be not confusing the bake time of the cookie you're trying to make with the chocolate chip cookies. The judges would be most unpleased if your cookies were raw or burnt. Fourth and last, memory. Accounts for the learner's prior knowledge, experience, and beliefs. Like how I used your prior knowledge of British Bake Off and my impeccable illustration skills to make a connection with the generative learning theory, and now you will remember it better. You're welcome. So I know you're asking yourselves, Hope, how does learning through art embody the generative learning theory? Well, that's a great question, class. In concerted generation, the simple act of translating text to a pictorial representation prompts the learner to select the most relevant information from the text. Next, attention would allow us to process the organization of the information spatially in a drawing. After that, we'd use our memory, thus our prior knowledge, to clarify the meaning of the text in relation to the drawing. Lastly, our motivation. This strategy won't work if you're focusing on the action of drawing itself rather than the material. So it works best with people who love to draw, like me. What is learner-generated drawing? Well, that's easy to answer. It's when students make drawings to achieve their learning goal. And it's scientifically proven. A study conducted by Liza Bobek and Barbara Tversky found that creating visual explanations has clear benefits to students. They discovered this by asking 127 7th and 8th grade students to either create a visual representation of a bicycle pump or a chemical bond and then participate in a post-test. They also noted that this type of learning benefited students with a low spatial ability most of all. Spatial ability is the capacity to understand and remember the spatial relations among objects that can be tested through a mental rotation test. 
In Concern to Our Nursing Students, I found a nurse educator textbook that provides examples or teaching tips on incorporating art in learning. The first tip is instructing students to draw out the cardiovascular anatomy by tracing a student onto butcher paper and then illustrating cardiovascular structures on top of the student's outline. The second tip is creating a visual study guide posters for a drug classes in the pharmacology lecture. Students from both exercises found that the activities not only were helpful, but also stress relieving. What are instructor generated drawings? Well, that's simple too. It's when teachers create drawings for their students, usually while they're explaining the material. In fact, dynamic drawings draw on generative processing, as students are more motivated to observe the instructor actively drawing. Therefore, the student is able to break down complex diagrams into more manageable parts, causing them to process each part of the diagram as the instructor simultaneously provides an explanation. A study conducted by the University of Georgia in California found that generated explanations was the strongest when students viewed instructor-generated visuals. They did this by randomly selecting 196 college students and assigned each group to either watch a dynamic video of the human kidney or a static drawing. After each session, the student either wrote a verbal explanation, created drawings, or rewatched the lesson. Then all the students underwent retention and transfer tests. The results indicated that watching a dynamic video followed by a verbal explanation prov provided to be most beneficial. Another study by Logan Fiora and Shelby Kuhlman from the University of Georgia observed 120 college students study text on the human respiratory system and then teach the material to a peer by explaining only, drawing only, or drawing, drawing and explaining. It was statistically significant that the explain and draw only group significantly outperformed the explain only and draw only group. The end. I hope you guys all enjoyed my presentation and I truly look forward to your feedback. Have a great day.